119. Not touching the mountain that was shaking was the law being 
given. You wouldn't have realized that unless you were following a law. You were just sitting there trying to take it in. You would not have got it. I want to challenge you. As we go through this year, if we're going to have a closer walk with God, we're going to have to go through several spiritual disciplines. January is going to be about the Word. And whatever we learn in January, I want you to take through the rest of your life, not just through the rest of the year. Let's see if we can become students of this. If you look at Psalm 119, you will see that it has, uh, as I said, 22 Hebrew letters, the alphabet of the Hebrew, uh, uh, alphabet is there. This is verses 97 to 104. You read Hebrew from right to left. So all the way down there, in on the right hand column is the letter, guess what? Mem or N. And if you look at it in your English Bible, that's because it doesn't look as pretty as that. I mean, you might have one letter M at the beginning of one of those sentences, but you definitely won't have every single verse beginning with that. So there are eight verses to every single alphabet letter. So 8 times 22, those of you who know calculus, <laughs> what would that be? 176, right? So there should be 176 verses in Psalm 119. It's known as the longest psalm of the Bible. It's the middle of the Bible. But here's something else you won't know. Out of the 176 verses, guess how many of them either mention God's name or allude to God? Every single one. And so if we look at it in English, you will see that there is the letter your. See, I've got to line it. Your, 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 and it's in every single verse. So every single verse of Psalm 119 refers to God. And guess what else is mentioned in 193, no, sorry, 173 out of the 176 verses. The word, or the law, or the statutes. And I have those in red, so you can see them really easily. The law, the commands, the gestures, the precepts, the rules, the word, the words, the precepts, right? So if I have to ask you, what is Psalm 119 all about? And, and you don't have to be a rock scientist to see this. <laughs> Just have to use a little bit of logic. Jimmy, it's about God's word. God's instructions. That's what it's about. And I took the letter M because it's right in the middle. It's just, just easy to do that. So I would encourage you at some time to look a little bit deeper at Psalm 119. What is it all about? What is God trying to say to us? Because I want you to live a maximized life. On Friday, I met Ryan. It was his birthday yesterday, and so it was really nice seeing him on Friday. He was in, I think we were in J.C. Penny, and he was looking for a store, uh, sorry, for, for shoes to work uh, with. And uh, as you know, he's a nurse, and he starts his nurse uh, work in January, so he's really busy right now, and he has to have really good shoes to be able to do his rounds. Well, as he was looking for these shoes, we were talking about what is going on, and I looked up and I saw a sign, and it said, not New Year, but Happy You Year. Happy You Year. Instead of Happy New Year. If you want to have a happy year, in other words, I would like to suggest that you open up the book and look at what the Bible says about how to maximize your life. This book is about two different models. And the one model is a little bit uh, more emotional than the other one. The emotional model that it refers to leaks a lot, you know, a lot of little tears. Uh, the one is a little bit more logical than the other one. I was just talking to a group of men, and yeah, I'd probably say, in fact, the other one's a real confusing. It's a very confusing model, but not when you open this and you follow it. It's very easy. It's very easy to see how we should live our lives, how we should maximize our life. And the first thing we need to do is maximize meditation. Look, if you would, at verse 97, and look at what he's saying you and I should do. If we want to maximize our life, if you want to know how to live your life, surely you've got to go to the owner's manual. Surely you've got to see what the guy who created you is saying to you how you should do this. Verse 97, oh, how I love the law. Now, while we're on Psalm 97, and while you have your Bibles open in front of you, look at Psalm 104. Look at the last verse of the end. 
through your precepts I get understanding, therefore, here's the last words, I hate every false way. So it begins, it ends by saying, I hate every false way, and it begins by saying, oh, how I love your law. See? So it's like, start, the first bookend is, I love everything about God's word, God's instructions, and it ends by saying, I hate everything that has not to do with God's instructions. In fact, it has to do with the wrong way of living our lives. And so we need to take this and we need to say, how often does he want me to love his law? And it says, it is my meditation all the day. It is my meditation all the day. How many of you are good at something? Some kind of a sport. How many hours does it take to become an expert in a sport? I wonder, Jeff, uh, did Leah spend over 10,000 hours dancing the ball? You think about it, I think she did. I spent hours, hundreds of hours, up against a tennis ball. And I wasn't, that wasn't even my main sport. I remember swimming, doing the, the starts and turns. I had no idea how many times I did that. I did the same with cricket, with table tennis. I did the same with the Word of God. I spent hours and hours studying things that I wanted to become an expert at. If I wanted to become an expert at restoring the car, Kevin, how many hours would it take? Not just a little bit, but an enormous amount of hours. If you want to be an expert with God's Word, then you have to start thinking differently. Come prepared to study. Come prepared to take notes. Come prepared to open your Bibles and follow every single verse. You can even see what the sermon is going to be Friday at noon. It gets emailed with a bulletin. And it's on the back page. The sermon is there. The outline is there. And it's very easy to figure out most of the time. I want to alliterate today with M's, you know, to sort of try to fall in with what uh, the songwriter was doing. So, so maybe this was a little bit confusing. But, but the word meditation is there, so you can make it figure it out. But at least read the section of scripture. <coughs> and have it ready, opened up, so that when we start talking, and not just the scripture, when we sing songs, look at the scripture just under the song heading. Think about what scripture is the song about. When there's prayers, listen for the word of God in the, in the prayer, or as we see in Gary's case, he reads it before. And, and, and so you can think about these things. The Lord's Supper, the giving. Everything connects back to the Word of God. Become a student of God's Word. If you have to spend just five minutes with God's Word per day, how would your life be different? How many of you since the first of this year have been studying or reading God's Word? Let me see. Anybody? Anybody? Okay. How many of you since the first of the year have made the commitment to read through the entire Bible in the year. Anybody? Okay, we have a few. I sent out a few challenges and I'm so excited to see those challenges coming back. And those who were challenged from my end was challenged to read the ESV Study Bible. It's got a one-year program and it's pretty nice. But there's a lot of different ones that you can use. The idea is that you're going to read the Bible. Now, here's the good news about this. Today is the 5th of January, right? No, no, four, right? Okay, we, we, so how many days do we have to catch up? <coughs> Only three or four days. That's it. It's easy to catch up. Catch up with God's Word. I also want to challenge you as a student of God's Word to meditate on His Word every single day. So what I want you to do is if you come to church one hour only per week, you will have 54 challenges. If you come to all four services, all four studies we have, you will have 256 challenges. You will be a lot closer to becoming an expert in the Word of God if you don't waste your time. I don't know about you guys, but I, 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 don't, know, I, I don't like wasting time. If I'm going to sit where you are for 23 minutes, right Billy, 23 minutes, then, then, then I'm going to want to get something out of it. And you can get something out of it if you prepare to study while I'm reading. But I'm just telling you what I'm saying. If while I'm talking, you get another verse come to you. Well, that's wonderful. There's so many nice verses. How many of you, looking at Psalm 119, happen to glance down to Psalm 119, verse 105? See, that's, that's a wonderful verse. 
and so on. So, so, so keep looking at it and study it, think about it as you're going through it. Try to spend time with God's Word. Secondly, not only should we maximize our life by meditating on His Word, but by maximizing the masterpiece. So here's the problem. When God created His masterpiece, when He created man and woman, He was very happy with the initial model. He gave instructions to the initial model. Guess what they did? They took those instructions and they threw them in the trash can. The first time somebody else came by to try to talk a hole in their head, to try to say to them, you know what God is saying? I don't know. Let me explain it to you. He's not really going to kill you. I know you might have said that, but surely you know you won't. He created you in his image. Why did he kill you? But he was leaving out something. God was talking about spiritual death, not well, physical death and spiritual death. And it wasn't going to be immediate, but the spiritual death would be immediate. And physically they changed immediately. They, 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 something, they knew something. When God was walking at the eve of the day looking for them, they were hiding away because they knew something. And then the very next thing you see, Adam has to name his wife. Woman, Adama, or Adam, Adam means man, Adama, in Hebrew means woman, of man, had to get another name. Because she was no longer Adama. Now her name had to become Eve, the mother of all people. So quickly you can see how man was messing up on God's creation. But if you want to go back to what he originally intended, then I want you to think about to be areas of your life. I want you to maximize your life so that when you compare yourself to your enemies, to your teachers, and to the elders or the wise people in your lives, you may say, you know what? I don't feel so bad. I've got where God wants me to be. And so this is what he says, verse 98, 99, and verse 100. And again, you can see commandments, destinies, and precepts underlined there. He says, if you want to be better than your enemies, number one, you need to have his word with you constantly. If you want to be better than your teachers, number two, you have to meditate, study his word. Not just have it with you, but study it. And if you want to be better than the wise people around you, not only must you have the word with you, not only must you study the word with you, but you must obey the word. You must carry them out. And so he says, your commandments make me, makes me wiser than my enemies, for it is ever with me. And then for the second one, I have more understanding than all my teachers who believe that I came from a monkey. You know that? Most of your teachers believe you came from a monkey. So they're teaching you from a crooked point of view. Their foundation is wrong. So don't get arrogant about it, just be aware of this. I have, made you, I, I have more understanding than my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. Secondly, verse 30, verse 100, understand more than the aged, for I keep your precepts. Many years ago, I found myself caught up in a war. Uh, whether I wanted to be part of it or not, I was in it. And uh, I stood over there with everybody else, and they gave me a little Bible. And uh, they probably told the same story to everybody that ever got one of these Bibles. And for the entire time that I was in this war area, I always carried it close to me, right there by my heart. Because they told me a story. My brother got one, they may have told him the same story. That this Bible saved somebody's life at one time or another. Somebody shot a bullet into it, and the guy had it over here, and it stopped, it stopped the bullet, and he saved his life. Now, we have the same rounds and rolling bolts of, as an AK-47, the weapon of choice of the terrorists. And so I could have taken this Bible and experimented and shot a round through it. I'm pretty sure it would have gone through. <laughs> I don't want to find out. All I want to know is that spiritually I've been protected. And right here in the beginning, on about the second page, are the instructions for this book. This is Psalm 119, verse 9. How can a young man keep his life pure but obey your commandments? Isn't that great? And then it's got verse 105, a lamp and a light, your fruit, your path. It's great. You know, so I've always kept this little book close to me. And while I was in enemy territory, I mean, that's all I needed to do. I didn't even realize it. I just had to keep it close to me. And it protected me from the enemy. Now, from about 9 in the morning to about 4.30 in the afternoon, I had nothing to do. We, we would be out walking in the desert, laying in a tree, 
and we were separated, everybody was separated uh, at quite a distance from each other, so that if the terrorists come across one of us, they wouldn't kill all of us. And, and, and I would sit there and I would take this book out and I would read it. And so not only did I keep it close to me, but I also studied it. And because I studied it, I actually started to live it. That's what we've got to do. If you want to maximize the model, if you want to maximize the masterpiece, you need to do that. One day I woke up and I switched on my computer and the internet wouldn't come on. And I reset the internet. I tried everything. Eventually I called the internet provider, my ISP. And I asked them, what is going on? And they said, a car has driven into the internet box, whatever that means. And it might be down for 24 hours. <laughs> you thought you'd be looking for a bag of arms. I mean, that's horrible! It is down! Wow! You know, how about your plug into God being down? You didn't worry about that. You know, the guy in Colossians 117 that holds everything, including your life, in the palm of his hands. Don't ever get unplugged from him. Meditate all of that. What? Maximize? Maximize this and maximize the masterpiece. And thirdly, let's go on and look at maximizing the march. Verse 101, verse 102. Again, this has to do with your path. Are you staying in the path that God has chosen or are you avoiding the path that God has chosen? Are you walking the path of your enemy? I hold back my feet from every evil way. In order to keep your word, I do not turn aside from your rules, for you have taught me. How many of you have walked in a path where your enemy is? Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. My brother and I lost a friend, Corky, this year, this past year. He was uh, taken captive by ISIS. And uh, about a year ago, before he died, before they shot him, the terrorists said, we will free him if you can raise money. And so my whole town and everybody I knew about, everybody knew about, was raising money to set this guy free. Because he and his wife were taken captive. They'd gone over for religious reasons and got caught. They were trying to improve the world, trying to improve people's lives who are really down and out. Doing a good thing. Not faulting their religion, but being more humanitarians than anything else. Well... Finally the money came and the exchange came and the last moment the terrorists decided they would keep Corky, Pierre Corky was his name, they keep him back and they would let his wife go free. So at least she could be back with the children. But they killed him when they were trying to free the American hostage which was his roommate. Uh, as the American uh, troops came in they sensed what was happening and the terrorists shot both of them. I imagine that there was a lot of time that both Corky and his wife meditated on God's Word. And I can read you many illustrations that I have right here in front of me of people who have been in a horrible situation and all they had was the Word of God. And you know what I'm saying? All they had. That's all they needed. And God would have brought the Scriptures to Corky and his wife when they needed them. And I bet you his wife still gets the Scriptures that she needs to get her through. Give her comfort. I know that we are in a bad, and we are oftentimes in bad places, but if we maximize our march in the worst of times, stay with what he's saying, don't vary, don't listen to the enemy, don't, don't give up on your faith, and things will be okay. Number four, maximize the munchies. How many of you get munchies? How many of you want to go to the refrigerator and just eat, 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 or go and buy, 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 buy? How many of you have these appetites that you struggle to keep control of? Yeah? Did you just call it the, the sin that so easily besets you? The, your, your, your Bible says they cling so closely to you. I like that. They cling so closely. That sin that cling so close. How do you deal with those? Verse 103. This is how you put something in its place that is nicer. How sweet are your words to my taste. Sweeter than honey to my mouth. And so you take something better. In counseling and in intake, I always have a question. And the question is, do you fall asleep easily? Do you stay asleep easily? Do you have early morning waking? And what I'm actually asking without anybody knowing, I don't know it, is I'm asking how much stress do you have in your life? How much guilt do you have in your life? How much anxiety do you have in your life? How much do you, do you dwell on things and are not able to let it go? 
You know what? If God's word, if you would hunger and thirst for God's word, Matthew chapter 5, uh, verse uh, 6, this is he that hunts and thirsts for righteousness, for he will be filled. If you would put that as your appetite, your main appetite, you'll be okay. Now, how do you do this? It's very simple. The more you read God's word, the more you will want to read God's word. The thirstier you'll be. It's like you take every time you read God's word, you're putting a little bit of salt in your mouth. And then, and then you're, you're just a little bit, and you get thirsty. You want to go back to the living word. You want to keep on reading the living word. And it's the only thing that will continually fill your life. And lastly, maximize your mindset. Maximize your mindset. Through your precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Now, that's really neat. I can look at my life and I can say, you know what, I want my life to be different by the end of this year. I looked at the sermon that I preached uh, in January, the first Sunday evening of January of 2014. And the, and the topic of the lesson was, will you still be alive at the end of 2014? See, you and I don't know. But what would it be like to meet God? And for him to know, I love his word more than anything else. But if you listen carefully, if you haven't just listened to the sermon, if you try to listen past what I'm saying, and you try to get your own application, you would have realized something like this. I must be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. You would have come across, because you can't read Psalm 119, not even, not even the letter in, without coming across with that. He wants us to put this in action. He doesn't want us just to keep it here. He doesn't want us just to, uh, to, just to read it. He wants us to actually live it. He wants us to become that masterpiece. A preacher in the northern part of Ohio decided he would challenge the church in his area. It's Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, about 20 miles uh, from Cleveland, Ohio. is a place called uh, Chagrin Falls. I think I'm pronouncing it right. In any case, he decided that he would challenge the church and he got an anonymous donor and he talked one morning about the talents, the parable of the talents. And he got somebody, a couple of maybe two or three people, to donate $40,000. And he said to the church, this is what I want you to do. I want to take the $40,000 and I want to spread it amongst you. And seven weeks after we give this money to everyone, I'm going to take it back, and whatever we get over and above the 40,000, we're going to donate to missions. So he did. He gave every adult $50, and every child $10. And they all had to go and invest this money and see what they could do with it. Well, they came back. Some people are still doing this right now because the seven weeks wasn't enough. But what they've taken to date, over and above the 40,000, is $38,195. What am I talking about? This is not just a book full of ideas, guys. This is what we need to be living. Become a student of God's Word. Choose not to listen to a small school voice, because I promise you, it's not a small school voice. It's loud and it's shouting and it's saying to you, it's begging, please, think about it. Please read this. You have no idea how much I want to give to you, and it's all in here. Or you can listen to the psychics, and you can listen to the UFO nuts, and you know what they all say? There's life other than this planet, and, uh, and, and there are voices from the dead speaking. And are they right? <laughs> Only here it is. It's already here. Here's a voice that didn't originate in this world. It originated out of this world, and it's been given to you. And it's unbelievable. And your soul is never going to be satisfied until you plug it in. Now, what about being plugged into the internet? Plug into this and see how your life will be different. If God has given you a message, Jerry, today that will change your life, please share that with this congregation. If there's a sin that so easily ensnares you, that clings to you, that you want to get rid of, please do that. If there's a promise that He gave to you and you want to make a stand on that promise, Please do that. If you want to be born again, baptized as he says to you, please do that. Whatever your need is, please answer this invitation by coming forward right now. And together we stand and sing.